Pokemon Imperialism Unova Edition. 16 Pokemon battle over the Unova region to see who can conquer it all. How it works. Here's a map of the Unova region. We're going to take 16 Pokemon and place them on the map. Each turn, we're going to spin a wheel to determine who's going to be the challenger, and an arrow deciding what direction they're going to fight. The winner of this battle will claim both territories and a random reward. We will continue to do this until there is one Pokemon remaining claiming victory. Let's get this comeback going. Pokemon Imperialism at its best. We've got Unova Pokemon, 16 powerful ones to say the least. And, and some new rewards that are way more powerful and better than the old ones. We've upped it. We're going to get it going. These Pokemon are strong. Trust me. So let's spin the wheel to determine who will be the first fight back. Here we go. Spinning the wheel. Our very first competitor is going to be Electros. Okay, okay. He is... Like, this whole, like, lineup is actually really strong. There's a few weaklings. But overall, I don't have a personal favorite on who's going to win this thing. Arrow spinning. There's a few options you have, and that is one of them. The arrow is closed, but I think it is going to be Cryogonal. Electro's Cryogonal, round one. Bring him back Imperialism. Bringing back the videos. Let's get right into the fight. Here we go. Let's get into the first fight. Cryogonal versus Electros, the challenger. Um, remember, guys, I am not selecting these moves. I know this is like a big contention in some of the videos. I don't select these moves. And I showed you guys at the start of the battle, I put the Pokemon, their moves, what they have currently. And I put a little percentage of what the chance of them selecting said move might be that way it's a little more like transparent like hey you guys see freeze dry it's got that much percentage to use the electros discharge it's all that pretty pretty standard stuff it might get a little more different in the numbers depending on super effective stuff and all that but you guys will always see no matter what. Cryogonal goes for the Ice Beam. That's huge damage. It is a critical hit. Electros responds with a wild charge. Knocks Cryogonal out. But. Hold up. Electros lives on 3 HP. That was a quick fight. That was a quick fight. I barely got to explain everything I wanted to explain. Electros is our winner. Which means Electros will be the first one spinning this boosted reward wheel i'm telling you guys this wheel is crazy we have 50 entries there are some repeated items i'm trying to make this fair but i'm also really want these to be like meaningful and electros is going to start it off by getting the choice scarf it's got that speed boost but it will always use the same move the whole fight if that makes sense so if Electros decides to roll a Discharge. It will use Discharge for the rest of it. You know, it could go good. Get that extra speed. It could go bad. But let's take a look at the map. One down, 15 more Pokemon to go. One Pokemon is already pulling away from the crowd. But who will that second Pokemon beat? Let's get to the wheel to determine who our next competitor will be. You know, Cryogonal could have done some big damage against the dragon, so these dragons better be happy that Electros did that. And talking about dragons, we roll Haxorus immediately. That is one Pokemon that did not want to fight Cryogonal. Haxorus, who are you going to fight? I think there is still an Ice type next to you, so you better be careful. So not quite. It's not touching, but it is going after someone, obviously. That someone is going to be Sawsbuck. It was kind of close. It could have almost been Electros fighting back to back, but that it clearly looks like to me it is Sawsbuck. So let's get into the fight. Here we go, battle number two. We have Sawsbuck versus the great, the powerful Haxorus. Oh boy, this should be a good fight, but I honestly don't know. Like, there's one Pokemon that is going to be really strong because it's a dragon. 
but I don't know if you can underestimate Sawsbuck. It has Mega Horn. This should actually do massive damage, and it does do massive damage. But at the same time, it's a dragon. How do you stop a freaking dragon? Like, look at that power. Sawsbuck is slower, which might be huge for cases like where it wants to use Zen Headbutt, but it doesn't quite have the speed to do anything with it. Breaking Swipe knocks out Sawsbuck. That's another three-turn defeat. Like I said, how do you beat a frickin' dragon? Haxorus, it's reward time. Let's spin this powerful reward wheel. Does Haxorus really need something else to make it even better? And that's something it's about to get is 100 EVs straight to the special defense. So if you're a special attacker, you might not want to be fighting our boy Haxorus. But, hey, he's a freaking dragon. What are you going to do about it? Let's take a look at the map to see what Haxorus now has claimed. Here's the map. The left side has just been getting terrorized. Give it a few turns. There might only be one Pokemon remaining. The other two parts of the field are completely fine. I'd love to see some action. There's some powerful Pokemon over there. Let's spin the wheel and hope we luck out and get one of these nice mons into a fight. Spinning, spinning, spinning. And we are getting my boy Hydreigon. This is my favorite. I said I didn't have any favorites, but this boy is my favorite. How do you beat a freaking dragon? Especially when he's as good as... Hydreigon. Okay, Hydreigon, who will you be fighting? It can only be downwards and to the left, and that is straight down. That is someone. That someone is a fish. Oh, boy. We have our boy versus a fish. Let's get into the fight. Here we go, round number three. We've got Alomomola versus the great my boy Hydreigon. And looking at the moves, I think it's pretty obvious who's going to win. But, hey, who knows? Hydreigon's faster. Hits with the Dragon Pulse. That's big damage. Brian connects. That does nothing. I told you. I told you. There's really not much Aloma Mola could do. There's Pound. That's big damage. Brian still does nothing. Like I said, there's Pound, but... Really, really out of all your options, is that what you're going to do? Try attack. This might just end it alone. Lives, but paralysis. What's going to happen? It's paralyzed. Just to throw some dirt into the wound. Alola Mola. Alola Mola. You could have done better. If it was anything else other than a dragon type, it's a freaking dragon. How does one beat a freaking dragon? There we go. Easy, easy, easy. Let's pull up the reward wheel now. Spinning, spinning, and our boy Hydreigon is going to get... Oh, boy. Oh, ho, 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 ho! 100 EVs in attack or special attack. I mean, if it's not obvious, it's going in special attack. And our boy is going to be a huge problem. And it's just going to deal massive damage. Let's go take a look at the map, though. Here we go. Finally, something on the right side happened, and it just happened to be another dragon. But, hey, there are still many options. We still have 14 Pokemon left, so let's get to the wheel to determine the next fighter. Spinning. I'd like to see some action in the middle, but more action in the right is not. Like, I'd be fine with that. And we're going to get some right action Potentially some middle action, depending on where Bisharp goes. Arrow has been spun, and oh, that is arguably close, but I'm going to say that is Braviary. We're going to have a Bisharp versus a bird fight. This is going to be good. Round number four, Battle of the Bee Pokemon. Typically, one would say the Steel type would tank this flying normal Pokemon, but I think, I think our boy has something special up our, its sleeve. It's all of a matter of fact if it uses it. And it does not use it turn one, but Crush Claw still does massive damage. Bisharp returns with a Night Slash. Big, big old damage. But let's see. Will it get it off 
in turn number two. It does not. Bisharp uses slash braviary holds on. Come on. Come on, bird. Get it done. You can do it. Just use your one move that you know. And there it goes. Super power destruction. That had over a 50% chance of going. And it took three turns to get it done. But our braviary bird is the winner. Which means our bird gets to spin the wheel. So quite a few powerful options that we have yet to see. TM's one. Some of these items are really, really good. And we're going to get a TM for Braviary. This was a tough choice. I think I'm going to go with Iron Head for Braviary. It counters rock types better. It doesn't get the stat lowering stuff that Superpower does, which is nice. And plus, it's just an overall strong move that can flinch. And as crazy as it was, Braviary was the first Pokemon to be challenged that one the challenger always starts off strong and then like kind of loses it but maybe in the end it can pull through i don't know we've got action on the left we've got action on the right give me a middle pokemon there's so many good stuff in the middle let's spin this wheel spinning give me something good and we're getting a middle pokemon baskelin don't sleep on baskelin he's got some crazy moves who are you fighting, Basculin? Arrow is spinning. Basculin is just spun the only way it can't spin. Respin. You have to challenge someone. And you're going up. Straight into Crocodile. This is going to be a good fight. Basculin might win a fight. Oh, boy. Round number five. By no means is Basculin just going to destroy in my honest opinion, Crocodile outpowers Basculin, especially with Intimidate. I forgot about that. But Crocodile completely destroys Basculin in pure strength. Double Edge? That still did big damage. You need one wave crash and you could win. But you can't sleep on Basculin. There is a reason why it got an evolution, but you can't sleep on the Basculin. But you might have to sleep on the masculine. It just it might be too late. Crunch? That does nothing. Earthquake? Yeah. Rest in peace, Basculin. There's a reason why you got an evolution. And it's because you can't compete with the big guys like Crocodile. Crocodile won. Time to spin the reward wheel. I feel like this wheel is so rewarding. You win, you win big. And Crocodile is going to be another TM learner. Okay, let's see what it's going to be. There's no better choice than Stone Edge. Let's teach Crocodile Stone Edge. This map is getting crazy. As much as I'd like to see another round of complete new people, I feel like this is the round that we do get at least one repeat. But there is always potential that two repeats are going to go at it. The only way to find out is to spin this wheel. Spinning... And our challenger is going to be... I called it. I called it. Braviary, the challenger, versus... Drumroll, please. Uppish? Is that someone? Oh, boy. I think Eclipse it. Our boy is about to take on the grass Pokemon. Amoongus. Oh, boy. Amoongus is something special. You guys are about to see. Here we go. The fight to determine the top 10 Pokemon. Now, you can see Amoongus is a little, a little weird. I, I said that before the fight, but there is a reason why Amoongus is weird. It doesn't really get much moves, especially without the access of TM. So, I decided to let Amoongus go weird. Let it toxic, let it spore, let it do its thing. But I don't think that's going to matter. Braviary just, like, absolutely did massive damage on a Pokemon that's supposed to be tanky. And it was not even a super effective move. But if somehow Amoongus lives an Aerial Ace... No, nah, not a chance. Rest in peace, Amoongus. I, it, I knew Amoongus had a very far shot out at winning... 
But if it could have gotten some TMs, I'm just saying. Could have been threatening. Sludge Bomb, at least. But no. Braviary gets another reward. Learning a TM probably wouldn't be the best for Braviary. There was a few good ones. But getting an item, it gets another TM. Okay. The TM it's going to learn. The TM that it's going to learn is Acrobatics. This is a one that I thought of last time. If it gets an item, it severely weakens it. But without an item, Acrobatics is just going to do massive damage. Let's take a look at this top 10 map. Here we go, our top 10 recap. Action has happened all across the board. We do have one Pokemon that has the slight edge over everything. That's Braviary. One, two, three, four Pokemon have two territories each, and we only have five Pokemon. Half of our field has done battle. The other half hasn't. I'd like to see a newbie fight. There's a small chance that two newbies fight. But we might get a lot of repeats now. But, who there's some powerful Pokemon that have not, have yet, to take the field. Spin the wheel. Our next fighter is going to be a new Pokemon and one of the potential double new Pokemon. It's essentially a 50-50. Who are you going to fight? Not that direction. Okay, not quite a Psychic. It's going to be a repeat of Hydreigon. A freaking dragon versus a freaking fiery bug two of my top pokemon in gen 5 let's get this fight going oh boy two really really strong pokemon are about to go at it two of my favorites as i've said i really like both of them and i i mean hydragon i do slightly like more but i'd be fine with either winning and that wasn't a crit was it the burn. The burn is huge. That wasn't a crit and that did that much damage. Hydreigon got special attack. Insane. Insane. Now, the burn could come through. Uh, I mean, if it does go for a special attack instead, not really. But Hydreigon goes for a crunch. Volcarona lives. Fire Blast. Hydreigon kind of eats that. All we need is one attack. Now, if Hydreigon misses, it could change everything. I am just saying it could change everything. Goes for the crunch. Does not miss. Hydreigon, you beast. You now have three lands. And you're about to get a second upgrade. I will say the best upgrade for you would be learning a TM. Because you really need Dark Pulse. Okay, good luck to the rest of you competitors. Hydreigon's winning this whole thing. Just saying. This right side of the map is really good. I mean, other than Lilligant, that's saying something. But maybe, maybe it could do something. It could fight Crocodile. It could win. But, oh, these two on the right side are scary. Better be careful. The, the whole left side of the field should be thankful that Braviary is protecting them from Hydreigon. But Hydreigon's ready to eat. Let's spin the wheel. Who is going to have to do something to put themselves up a little bit higher up to the competition? Here we go. Who is it going to be another new Pokemon? Okay. Got the tell. Okay, I'm interested. I am interested. There is one direction it does not want to go. It does not want to fight a dark type. And it might be safe. It just narrowly lucked out. And I don't know if this is really lucking out. It's fighting Braviary. If it fought Crocodile, it was done for. It really only gets psychic moves. It has Pound. Quote unquote for coverage. But now that it, it's fighting a normal type, it, it'll be fine. Let's get into the fight. Gothitelle, Braviary. One Pokemon will end up with the most amount of lands on the map. Here we go. The Big Bird Braviary versus the Maid, Gothitelle. If you're going to 
get your first fight. This is definitely one that you do not want to get in. But hey, maybe there's a chance. Slash? Decent damage. How much is Psychic going to do? That's the big question. That does decent damage again. Okay. Okay, not bad. Not bad. You got quite a few moves. Gothitelle, maybe something can work. The Iron Head does massive damage. Gothitelle only responds with a pound. And I do not think that that is going to be enough for Gothitelle. One more move. And Braviary wins. This bird is on fire. Not literally. That's Talonflame. Okay, another reward for you. Braviary's been stocking up on TMs. EVs, an item. Probably not an item. You don't really want an item. You're getting another TM. It's going to take a minute, a minute. I'm not sure what you want. What would you replace? I guess close combat over superpower so you're not losing attack if you happen to use that earl earlier in the fight. It's pretty much an even trade, but I would say close combat slightly better. Here's th the map. We have half the amount of Pokemon remaining. Almost all of them. Not almost all. I guess most of them technically have done a battle. We still do have three left. I'd love to see Bear Tick go out. Not not lose, but like come out and fight, maybe against Taxorus. I'd like to see Zoro come out. Maybe take on the, the big boy, the big bird. And Lilligant. I don't know what I'd want you to do. You have a slim chance of facing Crocodile, then that'd be your best bet. Sorry, it is what it is. Let's spin the wheel. Who will be fighting? Wheel spin. Eight Pokemon to choose from. And it's not going to be quite Bear Tick. But it is going to be Haxorus. Haxorus, who are you going to fight? Haxorus does not have a chance to fight Bear Tick. Even though they are touching, it does not arrow-wise line up well. And why do you keep spinning after things that you cannot fight? Actually, I think that's close enough to say it will be fighting the bird. The bird fights again. Here we go, round nine. Possibly the most important fight so far. Braviary, Haxorus. Braviary could get just completely so much stronger. But the winner of this, regardless of who, will get five lands. Massive. Haxorus goes for breaking swipe. Not too much damage, but the attack fall. Could that be something? Acrobatic still does massive, massive damage. That's insane. That's insane. Haxers goes for the breaking swipe again. Still very small damage. It's kind of surprising. I feel like Haxers should be stronger, but that is taking a toll on our boy Braviary. It's just not doing as much anymore. Haxorus goes for the crunch. Braviary lives. Can you do something? One last shot. Four HP. No way. Did Haxorus just win because of four HP? As long as you don't somehow miss your move here. Slash. Haxorus is now the current ruler of so much land. Honestly, I don't know what Haxorus wants. There's a, probably a few things. EVs, TM, items, everything really could be big. And that's a rocky helmet. Interesting. Got the boosted special defense. Now, if it takes hits on the physical side, it will be dishing back free damage. That could do something. I don't know. I don't know. Let's go take a look at the map. Oh boy, the landscape sure has changed. We now have two dragons side by side. That could be an insane fight. Only if they attack each other, though. But there's only one way to find out who's going to attack who. And that's by spinning a wheel. With the bird gone, we are down to seven Pokemon remaining. And we have a return, man. Electros coming back to the fight. Arrow has been spun. 
and Electros is going kind of to the left, but that might be kind of enough to be taking on Bear Tick. Well, I kind of wanted Bear Tick to go after a dragon, but it's a new Pokemon, new opportunities for the two of them. Let's get fighting. Round number 10. Guys, you got to remember here. Bear Tick, new to the fight. Does not does not have anything holding it back. Electros got a reward turn number one that determined it was going to get lucky or maybe unlucky and get the choice scarf. So Electros is always going to go first, but it's always going to go for that dis discharge, which did do solid damage. Whoo! Bear Tick responded with a big, powerful superpower. But maybe... That superpower might come back in the end and bite it in the butt. Electros discharge again. Bear Tick lives. Paralysis. Bear Tick, can you pull through? The icicle crash. Is it going to be enough? It is not because of superpower. And because of superpower, I think that Bear Tick just cost it the fight. Discharge comes out. Bear Tick faints. And Electros. Which I kind of, kind of haven't really thought about. Gains another reward. There are options. TMs would be very nice. EVs would be very nice. And Electros is going to get a TM. Ooh. I was going to say Liquidation to cover Electros' weakness, but Levitate does not matter. I think... In the long run for this Pokemon, Dragon Claw would be better for all the pesky dragons. So, Electros, you've gained Dragon Claw. Oh boy, this next fight will determine the final five. There's so many powerful Pokemon. You know if it's just way too strong. How do you put so many good Pokemon in the game and expect that one could beat them all? Let's do this. Who will be the challenger? Someone's on a mission. Someone is on a mission. Oh boy. Electros versus who? If it's Haxorus right after getting Dragon Claw. Now if it's Crocodile, Liquidation would have been nice. And it's that looks like in between. But I think it does point more to Crocodile. Very slightly, but more to Crocodile. Electros, you do have Levitate, so Earthquake is not going to hurt you. But you're kind of in a tough situation yourself. Let's get to the fight. Here we go, our fight to determine our final five. I don't think this is going to be an easy fight for either of them. Both of them lose at least one of their stabs. Oh, I didn't... I, I always forget about Intimidate. That's such a good ability. Especially when you're fighting a Pokemon that only has physical moves and Crocodile still faster than a Choice Scarf Electros. That's a crit. Did not get the defense drop. Oh, oh boy. That is insane. Crocodile now goes for Outrage. That's crazy that it's faster. It only needs one more hit. Electros. Yeah, that... There was not a chance in the world that you could have done something. Crocodile responds with an outrage. And, you know, Electros did some work. But it did not make our top five. Crocodile. The alligator. The crocodile. He's a crocodile, not an alligator. Gets another reward. This really could be something. Crocodile might... Life Orb, that would be cool. Leftovers? No, we're getting a TM, and that honestly might be the only thing Crocodile does not need as a TM, but I'll just double check, just in case. For the sake of its coverage, I don't think it needs Stone Edge anymore. I'm actually going to give it Gunk Shot for the future potential fight of Lilligan. That could be good. Here is our final five map. We've got three really strong Pokemon. We've got two Pokemon that need to do something. Crocodile and Haxorus are currently tied. Wait, no. No, no. Haxorus slightly has one more territory. But still, the three of them are really good. 
Zorak could be good. Lilligant, I'm a little iffy on. You'll see why once it finally fights. But we got one thing we need to do. We have to spin the wheel. Who will make the top four? Here it is. Five Pokemon remain. One will be chosen. And now Crocodile. He's on a mission. It's two Pokemon it could fight. One is a newbie. One is an old friend. And that might be the old friend. It is indeed Crocodile versus Haxorus. The two leaders of the board going at it. One will remain. Two monsters are about to go at it. Haxorus holding the rocky helmet. Crocodile rocking the Intimidate. This fight is going to be close. I think this fight could be extremely, extremely close. You know what would make it closer? If Rocky Helmet also procced when the Pokemon was using their move. Gunk Shot. Solid damage. Slash. It's a critical hit. That's why it still did solid damage, even with the Intimidate. That's, that's kind of what... Crocodile's got going for it is Intimidate. And Earthquake just does it. Crocodile is currently the champion of everything. Ruling the whole land. I thought that fight was going to be close. It didn't even proc <laughs> the Rocky Helmet. Oh, jeez, Crocodile. And you're going to get another reward? What is going to happen? Who is our best opportunity at this? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> The reward wheel, giving Crocodile something else that it does not need. If it's a TM, that could be... Oh, oh no, oh, no, oh, no. 100 EVs and attack. Rest in peace, everyone. Just give it to Crocodile. I said Hydreigon earlier, but just give it to Crocodile. Let's go take a look at the map to see where there's potential. <laughs> so Crocodile's probably going to fight in this fight. We're down to four Pokemon remaining. The winner of the next fight will make the top three, which is crazy. And Crocodile might have to fight in it. I th the best opportunity for everyone, I drag on maybe. Uh, Lilligan, he, he, if you want to win, maybe wait until Crocodile takes everyone down and then get your like final swipe. Like, ha! I don't know. Let's see who will be fighting in the top four fight. Here we go. Four Pokemon. Four options. And our fighter is going to be Lilligant. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. There is a chance Lilligant fights Crocodile. But out of the three other ones, it's probably the smallest. We've got this arrow spinning. It will determine who Lilligant fights, and that's no one. JK, never mind, that is Hydreigon. <sighs> I guess if you're not going to take Crocodile you're down yourself, maybe make Hydreigon sm stronger. Okay, you guys are about to see why Lilligant does not stand a chance. Time for the worst final four fight ever. As you can see, Lilligant gets no... Like, it just gets trash moves. All grass. Like, there really wasn't anything I could do about it because believe me I looked I wanted Lilligan to have something like why couldn't you get like a f I don't know I don't know anything maybe a fairy move like anything but no it really just was like lackluster and Hydreigon you almost do it what was that animation it wasn't anything Pedal Dance you know actually isn't bad damage if I'm being completely honest, if this was, like, anything other than Hydreigon, you could have done something and maybe got a TM, and it would have boosted you. But Lilligant, you waited way too long. You fought the wrong Pokemon if it was Crocodile. That could have been crazy. But Hydreigon has made it to the final three with Crook and a Pokemon that's done nothing. Let's take a look at the final three map. Okay, here we are. We're really favoring, like, reddish, purplish, pink colors. It's kind of wild, but, like, look at all three of these Pokemon. They're all pretty strong. One hasn't fought yet, and I think the one that hasn't fought yet is probably the weakest of the bunch. They're also all dark types. It's pretty crazy. 
Let's see who is going to have to fight their way into the final two. I'm hoping it's the newcomer, but maybe he'll luck out and just sneak his way on in. Three Pokemon remain. And our challenger of the final three is going to be Hydreigon. My boy. And actually, I forgot to spin his reward wheel. How could I? How could I forget that? Spin in this wheel. Hydreigon gets a reward of... Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. It's already fast. I mean, Choice Corp's not going to do much other than lock it into one move. Which could be a benefit. Well, I... I I mean, maybe Crocodile's pretty fast. This Choice Scarf, eh, Zorok's pretty fast too. Maybe this Choice Scarf does something, and maybe it locks it into Dragon Pulse. Something good. Okay, Hi Dragon, who are you fighting? Actually, upon further inspection, you can only fight Crocodile. Like, Crocodile perfectly protects Zorok from not being able to be hit. We're getting a Battle of the Beast in the final two, and some Pokemon lucked out and made it to the final two without doing anything again. Again. Crook, Hydreigon, let's get this going. Okay, the final three fight, and truly, these two Pokemon have gone crazy the whole time, and they both deserve to be in the final two, but luck didn't give us that battle. Intimidate does not work on Hydreigon, I will say that, but Hydreigon is going to be locked into whatever it selects here, and it chooses Hyper Voice. And that didn't really do too much, and Crocodile responds with an outrage. Hydreigon lived? Hydreigon lived? Hyper Voice did not do enough, and outrage is coming. And rest in peace, Hydreigon. Dang. That's my boy, and he made it to the top three. Good job. Crocodile's confused. If it could have lived one more, there was a chance, but... You can't, with a dragon move, what are you going to do to stop it if you're a dragon? But there we go. Crocodile has cemented himself into the top two versus the Pokemon that has yet to do a single thing. But before that, Crocodile gets one more reward to put it even higher over the top. There's so many good options. And does Crocodile really need any of them? Probably not. And it's going to get 100 EVs in speed. I wonder if that's going to do anything. Because Zoroark is fast. Crocodile's got decent speed, but not as fast. Maybe we should take a look at... Actually, you guys will be able to see before the fight starts. Let's take one final look at the map to see who's fighting for what. Obviously, Crocodile really doesn't need one territory, but to be the winner, you have to claim it all. The final look at the map. Crocodile basically has claimed everything, but has one final spot left to go. Zorok, we won't count you out. You could win one fight and take everything. Let's get into the fight to see who will be the Unova Pokemon Imperialism Champion. The final fight of Pokemon Imperialism Unova Edition. And I realized this after the fact. Their levels are different on the screen that I show you. So you won't necessarily see. This Intimidate could be huge. But let me just say one thing. Zorork, Zor Zorork speed is 118. Crocodile speed... Let me just let me just let me just show you something is 120 so those 100 EVs in speed mattered well I guess it doesn't matter if you're gonna just miss completely bro bro that I think that just made this the most anticlimactic final one of the wor worst ones straight up crocodile is the winner of our Pokemon Unova imperialism Let's just say the last round was the real final two. But he, there you go. Our winner, Crocodile.